blessings uh, to you all. This is Brother Williams. Thank you all for taking the time to join uh, with me today. The denial still goes on, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, just have a, a few videos to show to you today. You know, nothing that I'm making up or doing anything out of spite, but only to show you the word of God is true. And when there are evil men in power, the word of God declares, the people mourn. Amen. So, and you know, we can see how uh, this administration has caused men to mourn. Now, like I say, I'm not being political, but I am being biblical. There were kings in the Bible that the Lord used for his purposes. So we can't separate. I mean, think about it, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot separate uh, the political with uh, from the religious. You know, I mean, if that be the case, why do we waste time going to the voting booths? If we're not to be political, why are we voting in people that we think would do a good job for our nation you know that is being political when you vote that's being political so you know how can we separate it and that's the problem we have with the church we want to believe the word of God on certain levels certain subjects but when it comes to the you know the whole we reject it in some form or another amen so this is not about politics but it's about the word of god amen and the things that god has said in the scriptures that will come to pass amen so i just want to show you a few videos today amen vice president harris is still uh delusional she is still in denial concerning the border she is under the influence and persuasion that the border is secure now when you say something is secure that means there are no breaks in that system Nobody can infiltrate that barrier that you says is secure. But here we see hundreds and thousands of illegal aliens coming across our borders. Some coming for just reasons and then there are others that are criminal elements and terrorists and all of these things bringing fentanyl across the border killing our uh, young adults targeting our children in case you haven't heard there's this new rainbow fentanyl that uh, has been discovered coming across the borders and this administration know this, but yet they live in denial, uh, saying that the borders are secure. And I think this is one thing that they are being taught to deny, deny, deny. And you know, when you can repeat a lie so often, to you, it is the truth. But you know, God said, because they receive not a love for the truth, God will give them over to a reprobate mind so that they would do the things which are not convenient. So without further ado, I want you to listen to Vice President Kamala Harris 
in her own words in an interview with uh, a program that is in, in times past was pro-democratic and they push the democratic agenda um, and, and they you know uh, covered for the Democrats. This interview is not biased by no means. Final topic here since uh, we're here in Texas I want to ask about the border. Would you call the border secure? I think that there is no question that we have to do what the president and I asked Congress to do is the first request we made, pass a bill to create a pathway to citizenship. The border is secure, but we also have a broken immigration system, in particular over the last four years before we came in, and it needs to be fixed. We're going to have two million people cross this border for the first time ever. You're confident this border is secure? We have a secure border in that that is a priority for any nation, including ours and our administration. And she's dead set on saying the border is secure. You know, uh, <laughs> she knows she's being pressured. She knows what she's saying is a lie, but she's going to go down fighting. The border is secure. And then she deflects, we have a broken immigration policies uh, due to the last administration. I'm confused. You know, the border was well protected during the last administration. We didn't have uh, hundreds of thousands of people crossing the borders. The, they said it was the most secure border in the last 40 plus years. But she's blaming the problem on the last administration instead of taking ownership for their failed policies. But there are still a lot of problems that we are trying to fix, given the deterioration that happened over the last four years. <laughs> we also have to put in place a, 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 a law and a plan for a pathway for citizenship. For the uh, what's the pathway to citizenship? You know, it, it, it's already in place. That is, you go through the legal system. You see, my wife is from uh, Kenya. We had to go through the legal system. She's on that pathway for citizenship. She didn't get on the pathway for citizenship uh, coming here illegally. She came here legally. And now she is on the pathway to citizenship. You see, they say if it's not broken, don't try to fix it. And this is what uh, these people are trying to do. They are just stumbling over their words, trying to make things up as it goes. You know, because they want an influx of uh, illegal immigrants coming into the country so that they can... Uh, use them for their purposes, which is to maintain the, the rule of the Democratic Party in American society. They want chaos and confusion uh, in America. Millions of people who are here and are prepared to do what is legally required <laughs> to gain citizenship. We oh don't my. have that in place because people are playing really? politics. Really? If you want to deal with the issue, there are practical solutions, which include creating a pathway to citizenship, mm -hmm. fixing a broken immigration system, dealing with the root causes of why people are fleeing their root home. Root causes. Most people don't want to leave home. And if they do, it's usually because they're fleeing some harm or they simply can't take care of their basic needs if they stay. There you are know, solutions. The Remain in Mexico policy that President Trump had in place was working. You come, the people, they came to Mexico, whether they were fleeing because of brutality, uh, seeking asylum or whatever, they remained in Mexico. The president of Mexico was good with that. There was nothing wrong with that. It was working fine. And when these people applied for citizenship or asylum, they were given a date to come across the border to go before the proper authorities and receive uh, uh, their authority 
to be in the country. So I don't understand what, she, what she's talking about. And, you know, neither does she. Uh, because, you know, they all are liars. And like I say, the word of God has, uh, we, we've seen that in the word of God. I've shown you the scripture where they say because we have made a covenant a covenant with hell, with death, with lies, are we in agreement? I don't understand it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And um, sadly, this has become such a partisan issue instead of something where we work on it together, agreeing that what we're doing is not working as a nation. It's not working. <laughs> Oh boy, Final topic I here. tell you, you know, these people can uh, pretend to be so sincere, so, uh, you know, uh, in touch with reality that it is almost a joke. Amen. I um, want to show you another video as well. And they all are speaking the same language. Here we see where. Uh, John Pierre, the uh, spokesman, spokesperson for the White House, is also in denial, and they are uh, speaking lies, cover up, and they really are void of the truth. Corinne Jean Pierre says, "No one is walking across the border." Remember that. Uh, also, that prompted Ted Cruz to act. Let's listen. But that's not, it's not like somebody walks over and <laughs> that's not, that's, that's not exactly how. exactly what's happening. It is not that simple. It's not just that people are walking uh, across, uh, across the border. Did you see how she had to chuckle after she said, it's not like people are just walking across. <laughs> you see how she had to laugh because she knew she was telling a lie. So she had to laugh it off. You know, these people are amazing. Senator Ted Cruz has uh, publicly invited, suggested that you come down to see that for yourself. Who? You? Wait, Senator who? Ted Cruz of Texas. And you mean tell me she don't know who Senator Ted Cruz is? She heard what the man said. But like I say, this is all part of their denial game, this deflecting and, you know, these people, like I say, they, they are truly amazing. He's, he's suggested that you come down and see for yourself whether migrants are actually crossing the border by foot. Um, is that something that you would take him up on? I certainly don't need lectures <laughs> uh, or invitations from Republicans about the border or uh, border policies. And, um, you know, and I certainly won't take advice on border from, from anyone who voted uh, against uh, securing record level of funding uh, for the Department of uh, Homeland Security. Okay. She don't want to hear anything about what a Republican senator has to say concerning the border. In other words, it's our way or no way. It's our truth. Your truth, your opinions don't matter. We have our own truth. Uh, this is sad, ladies and gentlemen, but this is the type of nation that we are living in where people are, they are using their own truth for their own uh, justification. There's another video I want to show you as well. You know, someone once said, if you can't beat them, join them. Texas Governor uh, Abbott has become so frustrated with the unwillingness of the Biden administration to see that there was a crisis at the border, to understand the thousands that were coming across the border um, was a danger to the American people because, you know, we don't know who's coming across. The, the, vet, the vetting is not being done as it should. So he decided to start sending these immigrants to some of these sanctuary cities uh, in America, Chicago, Washington, D.C., and, and some of these other places. Well, not only did he begin to do this, 
but also when it was discovered that the Biden administration was secretly uh, busing these immigrants to uh, other places in the United States, and, and namely Florida, Governor DeSantis said, no, no, we're, we're not going to have it. So now they are giving this administration a taste of their own medicine. Coming in here at the live desk, this is new video just in after two buses dropped off migrants this morning from Del Rio, Texas, outside the vice president's home in Washington, D.C. Vice President Kamala Harris lives at the Naval Observatory here in D.C. At least 100 migrants, we are told, mostly from Venezuela, arriving here this morning outside of Harris's main gate. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has sent buses before to D.C. and to other cities like New York City and Chicago here in recent weeks. He is a vocal critic of the Biden administration. He says Texas cities are overwhelmed with migrants and other cities outside of Texas should also see the realities of the crisis on the border right now. To help deal with the ongoing migrant crisis in his state, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis sent two planes of illegal migrants to Martha's Vineyard. Nearly 50 migrants were flown to the island, famously known for being the home to former President Obama and more of the rich and famous back in oh April. Florida state legislators appropriated $12 million from the state budget for the Florida Department of Transportation to implement the Immigrant Relocation Program. Emergency officials on Martha's Vineyard tweeted Wednesday, quote, Due to an unexpected urgent humanitarian situation, DCEMA are opening emergency shelters tonight on Martha's Vineyard. If you're willing and able to volunteer in a clinical or non-clinical role, contact Duke Office at 508-684-8015. Christina Pushaw, Rapid Response Director for Ron DeSantis, responding with, you're freaking out over two plane loads of migrants in Martha's Vineyard, one of the wealthiest towns in America. Now imagine how Del Rio, Texas is doing with hundreds of migrants crossing the open border every day. <laughs> hey man, this is amazing. Hey man, sending them to places now where it is in their face and it is now affecting them. See, as long as it was, it was there in Texas, you know, far away from Washington, D.C., far away from the rich and the famous, it was okay. But now that these immigrants are being dropped off at their front door, down the street from Vice President Kamala Harris's home, in her home where she has a fence set up, a, a wall, a border, but yet she don't want to secure the border, the southern border. Hypocritical. See how, like I say, see how hypocritical these people are. They have a big wall surround their house and probably armed security as well. But you... You're not allowed to have this. So they begin to send them down. And now uh, the, uh, I don't remember who it was, the mayor of, of, of Martha's Vineyard or uh, D.C. or wherever, uh, claimed it was a disaster area, claimed a national disaster, an emergency situation. We need to do something about this. Amen. Over a couple of hundred of immigrants that were dropped off. It's a national emergency there now. But as long as they're coming across by the thousands from Mexico into Texas, it was no problem. So amazing. Amen. This administration and their colleagues. Simply amazing. The governor of Illinois, meantime, issuing a disaster declaration and deploying <laughs> National Guard members to help deal with... Disaster declaration. Deploying the National Guard. Why didn't they get President uh, Biden to do that a year or two ago? Why? But now they're coming to their hometown, their sanctuary city... Now it is a national emergency. Bring out the National Guard. It's just terrible. The influx of migrants arriving in busloads from the southern border. The governor and Chicago's mayor, Lori Lightfoot, condemning the move. <laughs> What the governor of Texas is doing is a stunt, and he's playing games with people's lives. We will not let his plan work. We absolutely will not let that happen. 
New York City's mayor, meantime, saying the migrant situation there at a breaking point since oh early boy. August. More than 2,200 migrants have been sent to New York from the southern border. 7,900 migrants sent to D.C. and about 300 to Chicago. Check out those numbers. 2,200 to New York. 7,900 to Washington, D.C. And the, the mayor of Washington, D.C., she's crying too. Chicago, only 300. But yet and still, like I said, we have more than a million immigrants that have came through the Mexico-Texas border. Millions. Millions. And they didn't see any need to call out the National Guard. They didn't see any need to complete the construction of the wall. No need to do any of this. But when a few hundred, a few thousand comes into their cities, their sanctuary cities, and I'm going to keep harboring on that, their sanctuary cities where they're supposed to be open, uh, welcoming to illegal immigrants, now it is a state of emergency. Hypocrites indeed ladies and gentlemen. GOP leaders giving their take. Ohio Representative Jim Jordan tweeted, liberal mayor supported sanctuary cities <laughs> until it was time to give sanctuary. Governor Greg Abbott argues because Chicago and New York City are sanctuary cities, they have more resources, and he says they're only feeling a fraction of what border communities in his state are experiencing. Coming in here at the line. Amen. Amen. They only, like I say, they only experience a very small fraction of what many uh, border cities uh, across Texas are experiencing and not to mention like I said ladies and gentlemen most of those immigrants that came across were rapists murderers uh, terrorists there's many stories of Americans being killed uh, by these illegal aliens that are coming across uh, sex trafficking I mean uh, let's not forget the hundreds of I illegal immigrants that were found in the back of tractor trailer trucks dead. And uh, all of this is the blame of this administration who has willfully closed their eyes from the truth, who have uh, come up with their own truth and nobody else's opinion matters. This is Brother Williams. I just wanted to show you this video in black and white. You can see it for yourself that this administration and those that support this administration are hypocritical in their thinking, uh, in their actions, uh, and in their justice. This is Brother Williams. Until next time, be blessed.